You asked, and we delivered. Introducing the Dave Moss Tuning Subscription Channel on YouTube. All of Dave's premium content for one low price. Put one of the best suspension tuners on the planet to work for you. Find the link in the description box below and get started today. First thing to look at when you're inspecting brakes is brake fluid and your air gap. Now in this instance, we have zero air gap. And if we're gonna replace the brake pads, there's no expansion room here for us to move the caliper out, push the pads away to put the new pads in, to go ahead and reset the caliper. So the important thing to remember there is before you're even thinking of doing a brake job, over time as you use your brakes, the pads wear down, so the pistons come out, so you top off the brake fluid. So if you're gonna check where you're at, also make sure in your air gap, because they do say upper and lower level on the reservoir itself, make sure you're not over full before you start the job. So the next thing to do is actually verify that this is completely full. It may or may not be because the reservoir cap could have sucked all the way down. So let's go ahead and unscrew the cap. And look at that, and the reservoir rubber is sucked completely all the way down. So let's move this and then it's much easier to see. The other thing that's very important is that there's a ton of water in the cap itself. So, and in the threads, there's water everywhere. So it may be worth changing brake fluid. So let's pull this out and keep it intact. Oh, there's our egg gap. So let's pull this out. And you can see as it got sucked down and the pads wore away, created a vacuum and sucked that all the way down. And then inside, it is completely full of water. I can't see, let's go out. So, all right, let's move out for that. Let's get it in the sun, there we go. It's absolutely packed with water. So let's pour it out. Ready? Yeah. So we need to reset this back to its standard size. Clean the water out of there. And then we'll reset that to show you what it looks like when it's correct. So the air gap is very clearly visible between both. So the first thing to do is always take something apart to see what you have before you start in and dive in and make conclusions about things. So in this instance, the other part, which Dave can see now, is the brake fluid itself is rather black. So we're definitely going to be changing that brake fluid at some point today after we take a look at the brake calipers and go through some routine maintenance. So before you start this whole procedure, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the brake pin. Now in this case, it's a five millimeter Allen that screws in to the caliper itself. Sometimes you have little R clips that you pull out and the pin slides out all by itself. So there's a mechanism you have to be aware of. So in this case, we know they screw in, so we'll loosen these Sometimes they may be very, very stiff because they've not moved in years. So that's loose. Loosen this one. And again, just a tiny bit. Now we want to go ahead and loosen our bolts. In this case, they're six millimeter Allens. And then we'll go ahead and remove them.
And then when you pull the caliper off, pull it right against the wheel so it slides back. Now in some cases, especially if you have oversized rotors, you have to turn the caliper sideways to get it off by the wheel. But in this case, the rotor gives us just enough room between it and the wheel to get the caliper out. Why do I want to be careful with that? Because we want to take a look at the pistons. We want to see that these pistons are even in the way they come out. And then we want to obviously check the brake pads to see if we should replace them. Well, given Mr. Williams' excellent braking ability, those pads are pretty low and we're going to remove those and keep them as what I would call an emergency spare set. There's probably a half a day left on these, no more than that. So we're definitely going to replace them. The other part is we know up at the top we've got plenty of expansion room if we push the pistons back in which are nice and clean and that way we'll be able to put the new pads in. So. Let's go ahead and remove our pins. And if you look on the back side, there's no spring plate here at all. So as soon as this comes loose, the pads will drop right out. So keep your finger underneath the pads on both sides while you extract the pin. That's the back pin. And we're going to talk about the pins in a second here. And that's the front pin, rear pads, back pads. So we'll let that caliper hang for now. And then with the pins, we'll put it against the white background of the fairing. You'll see that they're shiny and black on one side. And that's where the pads move. And on the back side, there's nothing there at all. So it's almost all black. So the pins themselves are quite dirty and the other part that we need to look at is are these pins where the pads hang notched because then what will happen is the pads only move in this area and they get hung up so you get brake pad chatter not braking chatter so these are pretty messed up they're actually quite grooved so we need to replace these. We're not going to do it today, but they'll be replaced before the next track day. So that one's shot in the back and the one in the front is equally as bad. You see that shiny notch right in there. So these have to be replaced because when you get a dish, it hangs the pad up. So the pad wants to swing. You need the pad to move. So Braking efficiency is not where it should be. So we're going to get some um, 400 grit and clean this up and at least get it where it's somewhat rounder and all the debris and rust off of it. So let's hang the pads in the notches. And you can actually feel them sit in. So when the brake works, the pad itself is supposed to slide backwards and forwards but it sinks into this groove. So when it's sat in the groove, the pad moves this way and this way. And that's why there's a very shiny area here because that's all it's moving in. The movement should be like completely 90 degrees to the pin. But when it swings, it swings. So what we've got to look at on the pad is thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom. So these are wearing reasonably well, reasonably evenly. So at that point, we're good. The other thing, of course, is we still have a line in the pad. That line hasn't gone away. But you should never say, oh, I got plenty more material because I got all this pad left, because that line may go all the way into the backing plate. And then you're going to have to buy brand new rotors because you're metal on metal. So in this case, we're going to clean the pin using some 400 grit and we're going to go very lightly along the length of the pin because that's the way the pads are going to slide.
and just clean all the exterior stuff off. You don't have to rub very hard at all. You just wanna clean the areas where the pins sits with the pads. Now that's done, reverse the pin and then clean this side. So now our pad, we'll clean it down properly. But the pin is now much cleaner, a much more even surface with no crud built up that could hang the pads up. So right now our other caliper is still firmly attached in place. So when we move these pistons, it's not gonna move those pistons and then they fall out. Very common mistake. So whenever you're working with brakes, only one caliper at a time. So what we want to do now is hopefully by hand move all four pistons because they're nice and clean already. They don't need a good toothbrush scrubbing. Push them back in so we can seat the new pads and get that part of the job done. So hopefully everything moves easily by hand. And that piston moved instantly. You can see the difference in gap. So the hard part now is as you push one, the other will move. So getting them all to seat properly without cheating and using a screwdriver and you, you can destroy pads doing it that way, but it's much easier to use your hands and try and get them flat. So we got nice and lucky there, they're all ready. Everything's in place. So now we've got to locate the pads and the pins. Always use gloves with brakes. You don't want any oil on your skin on the brake pads at all. So we'll put those two in because these are GSXR 1000 calipers that were put on the 750 for better braking power. Way back in the day, this was a AM, top class AMA race bike. Way back in the day, when it was called AMA racing. So that's in. Now, we've got to make sure the pads go high enough for the pin to locate. So, single pad pistons and calipers can be extremely tedious and a work in progress. So always take your time because often there's no spring clip up here. It's very difficult to get the pads actually lined up properly. So that's, that one's ready, but that's that pad. So we've got to hold it while we slide this one through. Whoops. We'll use another one. We'll go retrieve that in a minute. So. We've got those two, we'll hold them, we'll put the brake pin through, one and two. So that's all safely located. Now, if you want, you can use graphite grease, you can use anti-seize grease, you can use whatever you want. For here, for the pin, so it doesn't corrode and stick, but as this pin's coming out within the next 10 days to two weeks, I'm just gonna do it by hand. And all I'm gonna do at this point is snug it there so it sits and as far as it'll go. So that's all I want for now. So as that's done, we'll go retrieve our other pad and put the back ones in. Same thing, just screw it in till it snugs. Now 
Okay. Now when you're putting the caliper on, you want to make sure the pads are held wide. So having your fingers in the back like that is very helpful to make sure the pads spread on both sides. And then, with them spread, just slide it in. Now we have to do the other side. So if we're doing the other side, we need these brake bolts back in. And don't just turn them a couple threads. Don't be lazy. Put them all the way in by hand. They don't need to be all the way tight, but just put them all the way down by hand. The last thing you want is the caliper coming off. There it is. When you're stripping the other side. Put that back there. So that caliper's done with the new pads in. We know the pistons are clean. We don't have anything else to do. So we'll go to the other side. We'll repeat the exercise. And remember, brake pins first. Do you have an Allen that needs to be undone? Or do you have a bar that has clips on it? So take a look first before you get after it. Now, the interesting thing is we just push those pistons all the way back on one side. Look at the change in the brake fluid level. It's significantly higher, even though it was at its lowest mark. So if we pump up the pistons on the other side, there's a risk that brake fluid will spill out. So at this point, where we're at, that's pretty full. So you can take a paper towel and take quite a bit of that out by letting the paper towel soak it up. Bring that level down to the low level again, and then start on the other caliper. So always be diligent when you move from one side to the next. Do I have room? And wherever possible, take the top off. Because if you're pushing on and pushing the caliper on and it fits, well, when the brake fluid gets hot, especially if it's got water in it, it'll expand. And then when it expands and hits the cap and there's no expansion room, your pistons move and then your brakes lock on. So if you're removing fluid, the cheap, quick, easy, and lazy way is to take a paper towel And as this fluid's going to get changed anyway, soak some up. To bring the level way, way down. And of course, your trash can has to be very close by so that you don't drip brake fluid all over the garage. So now we can commence with the other side with safety, knowing we're not going to get brake fluid all over the floor. Time to check brake pads and see where we're at in terms of wear. This should be done visually this way. Every day you go to the track. You might have had a really great day, been up to pace, got way more braking in than you ever thought about. So one of the checks is to look through your rotor and see how far your pistons are sticking out. If those pistons are out a long way, odds are you're getting low on pads. So I did a visual check after the last track day, and yeah, we got some new pads to put in because, let's go ahead and take our right caliper off. Visually, I am getting really low on the caliper, it seems to me. So let's extract it and take a look. Never hurts to check, right? Brakes, we depend on those all the time. So getting in there and cleaning stuff and doing other things periodically is also really good maintenance. So at this point, let's extract our caliper and take a look at our pads. I am looking at what the friction pads are left. The gold is the backing plate. The metallic material in blocks is actually your brake friction component that binds to the rotor and stops the bike. So for me, visually, that is way too low. So I'm gonna pull these, and I'm not even gonna keep them for a spare. I'm gonna go ahead and throw them away. So with the Brembo monoblocks, there are no pins here, nothing to pull out, push in, remove. So these pads actually sit with two metal tabs either side, and those metal tabs locate inside the caliper. 
So what we've got to do at this point is extract carefully the entire backing plate and go ahead carefully and get those two great big plates moved out of the caliper and out of the way. I'm wearing gloves because you don't want any hand residue, any hand oil on any part of the brake pad surface. And you'll notice that these are different pads and we'll get into that in a little bit. So next, what we need to do is see if we can extract the pads. You can try it by hand in pushing down and forward. And then if that works, you might, you might be lucky enough to extract one of the pads because they're worn down so low. So let's look at the difference between the OEM and our performance friction. Performance friction is a solid pad. The OEM is two individual brake pads. So why are there two? Heat dispersal. So as you get lots of heat into the backing plate itself, having a gap makes sense with this pad in terms of what the material is to disperse heat that way. Performance friction fields with their design, they don't need that. You'll also see in some pads, lots of lines cut into the material, for again, for heat dispersal, but also when those lines are cut in, it's there for you to see how much pad you have left. And when you've got rid of all the lines, it's time to change the pads. All right, so now let's extract this one. Push down and push across. And that one's extracted as well. Let's have a look up top. We have a ton of room available to us there. So I can go ahead and push these back. And when I'm done pushing them back, now we have to go and check the reservoir level again to make sure we're not out of room. Because when we put the pads in, the new ones, and push those back as well, we've got to make sure that we can fully retract the pistons. Now, first thing before we actually put the brand new pads in, Make sure that your spring plate is correctly located on the top of the caliper, right here. Those flanges sit right against the caliper itself, so that has to be pushed tight. So once it's in position, turn the caliper around, keep your finger on the back side, turn that around so now we can see our pistons are fully retracted and we're ready to go. So first pad's gonna go in. Obviously the two tabs here go up against the spring plate. So that goes, slides in. We've got to push it against the spring plate and then we have to sit it into the gap. This isn't as simple as it looks, so you have to be very, very patient because it's an extremely precise fit. And what you don't want to do is put the pad in sideways and not be able to get it into position. So. See how it's crossed up? I won't be able to get that in at all, so we have to lift this back up. So this is where it becomes tedious in balancing this up high, pushing the other end against the spring plate so that it drops in, because it's such a precise fit in terms of distance side to side. So there's the first pad located, so we're done there. Now we can push the second pad in. Again, orient it correctly, that way. Which way? So it's going in this way, like that. Those two upper spikes are going up. So let's push that side in, get that lined up correctly. Now, if you haven't got the pistons completely flat, See the second pad won't fit. So we need to go and push this one back again. That's why we're wearing gloves. 
Now let's see if that'll slide in on top. Not quite. So pull that out again and then keep doing that until this is fully seated all the way down. So after a struggle, <laughs> Dave had to turn the camera off, it was taking too long. Both of the brake pads are in, they're both located, so the caliper is ready to install. So at this point, we'll put the caliper on. Then we'll get put our bolts in, but as in all the brake videos that you may have seen, for some of you that haven't, there's a process on actually making sure the caliper is straight. So what we're gonna do is screw these in until they're finger tight and back them off a tiny bit. Once we're done with that, we're gonna repeat this exercise on the other side. We've got our calipers hung up out of the way. Our brake rotor is full of real big comet tails and high and low marks and everything else. And we're not really sure what the compound of the pads was before, what the manufacturer was. So we're gonna go ahead and clean these rotors. Now, we made a video about cleaning rotors the other day, and that created quite, shall we use the word, furore. Let's take Galfer as an example. They state when you're putting pads on, you need to have clean rotors. So, the pad material can bond evenly to the surface of the rotor. And then as the pads bed in, then brake pressure pad friction is even throughout the rotor as it turns for more efficient braking force. Now with all these high spots on the rotor, what we're getting is high and low spots, so we're losing braking efficiency. So while there is, of course, a huge debate about a great many things in life, in this instance, I've always been a firm believer of cleaning the rotor as best you can. And there's many ways to do that. There's the lazy way, which is pull the wheel out, take the rotors off and use a brake hone, or get them sandblasted. Or there's the much more Chinese hand torture way of using a piece of 400 grit sandpaper to put an X pattern, so you go this way once, and then when you're done with that direction, then you go this way. So you create an X pattern on the rotor, and you can see already where I've started cleaning. Look at all the grooves to show how uneven the pad material is. Now, if you're gonna do this by hand, be prepared for about 10 minutes per side so 40 minutes of using this stuff. If that's too much for you time-wise and it's gonna hurt your hands, make a common sense decision to pull the wheels, pull the rotors, and have them cleaned professionally by someone that has the right tools or a sandblaster. Now that we've done all the sanding, the most important next step is to clean everything. The last thing you want is any material left on here. Rather than spray it all over the place, put it onto a paper towel or a shop towel, and then wipe that down. Much easier way of doing it. And just wipe around the rotor. I prefer in a circle motion. And you get all the dirt and debris off of it. Then the other thing about Doing that is don't forget you've got to do both sides, so start on a new section. Don't drag dirt from the other section onto this side. Then we'll turn the towel around and go the other way and clean the other rotor. Then when we're done with the other rotor and I'm satisfied it's clean, I'll get a dry paper towel and go over the surface of that to make sure it's all gone. And then we're ready to reinstall the calipers. In sanding everything down, we couldn't get it perfect because there's years of brake pad material on here, but at least the surface is relatively flat. All of those hot spots in terms of circles are gone. So it should be a simple process of bedding everything in properly. 
The other thing though, in when you see parts like this where it sands high and low, these rotors definitely need to be brake honed or go into a sandblaster and have them cleaned all the way up. So it's time for these to get a real professional treatment and done properly. And when you do that, the other part that's really important is make sure you take some Verlier calipers and measure the width of the rotor to make sure that it is still in spec. To schedule a remote tuning appointment for you and your bike with Dave via text, email, Facebook, etc., contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.